Um, thank you, Russell. And as Russell said, there's, there's parts of this work which is very dear to my, uh, my work and to my heart. And a, a key part of that is the interoperability and integration of services. And to do that, we need standards. And I was trying to think how I could explain to, to non-standards people a little bit about why standards are important. And it's a little bit like this. If I have one agency wants to set up something and they build this, and another agency builds this, they just don't work together. And, um, and actually, all we need is for them to do that. And they might be a little bit different, but to get that adjusted. Now, the specifics of that, how any particular standard applies or, or which particular standards apply, I don't really have a clue. Well, I have a few clues, but, but no real idea about the specifics. So I come back to other members of the team and people like yourself to ask that question. And at the last standards workshop, we did a little piece about um, making standards <laughs> consumable for all. I'm looking a little bit richer here because I think you facilitated part of that session. We have this need for standards, as, as Alistair was saying, to be in-depth and detailed and to really get the bits that join together working and to join together. But I believe for people like me, we also have this need for standards to be consumable so we can be the evangelists of them as well. So that we can get out there and talk about where they need to be early and then come down to the people that really understand how they come together. And of course, one of the key parts of government is local government. Oh, it's right behind you. Sorry, Chris. Is, is local government. And, um, and Shulk has come all the way from Clutha. Um, I'm just checking Shulk's pet soon, actually. That's precious over really, isn't it? Um, Shulk Breitenbach. And Shulk's come all the way from Clutha. And he's part of local government down in Clutha. He understands uh, how digital works importantly in his world, but also how these standards make his world work. Um, so I'm going to hand over to him to talk a little bit about standards in the local government environment. Thanks, Shulk. Thank you. Hi, guys. I am Skull Breitenbach, the ICT manager at Lutzer District Council. I've been asked to be volunteered here to run through a quick five minute show. So this is very scripted, trying to fit in everything in five minutes. So be with me. I have over 20 years experience with IT and majority of it's in the private sector and only recently five years in local government. I'm going to be very quickly and just going to overview of the Clutha district and our digital transformation journey and how digital standards assisted us in this venture. For those that haven't been to Clutha yet, we are a picturesque district in the south of the south, home to just over 18,000 folk. Our main industry is farming. I'm one of four IT staff supporting around 120 other staff and we're one of the largest looking after, we've got a very low rate payer base. We've got one of the largest roading and water assets that we need to look after. So CDC has significantly underinvested information management and ICT in the past. That this had a broad impact, not just on staff and services, but also on the community. I started at CDC just over five years ago with the task of moving us into the digital age. I saw this as a golden technical opportunity as I could basically start from a clean slate and design and build a landscape that is simple and efficient. I quickly realized that the challenge is not technical, but more the fixed mindsets that was entrenched over the decades due to the lack of exposure to digital tools and practices. I had to tap into ancient geek knowledge. And I know that fear and frustration leads to anger and anger leads to the dark side. <laughs> Thus, I had to employ dramatic measures to win the hearts and the minds to move from the foreign Aucklander IT guy coming down to take away their jobs to the weird, funny, hopefully, IT guy that actually listens and always friendly and helpful. And helpful. Thus, replacing fear and frustration with humor and compassion. So, unfortunately, Star Wars, Star Trek trivia can't get you very far in the real world. So as any good IT person does, I started to Google and found my support in digital standards. With very, very limited resources, I knew best practice is never going to be achievable, but I can aim for at least good practice 
So I focus on the way, on the why and the how to build our digital landscape. I tried to find what is the end goal in each text I digested and looked at out for how can I make it simple and convert it in a practical action. Through the journey, I learned why, how, and together a much higher success rate of engagement than must, should, and have to. Surprisingly, I found that citing standards in business cases had a much higher success rate. So the short of it is we ended up delivering about nine years worth of project in five years of only gaining an IT staff member once every annual plan. The majority of the time we were just two doing this. So here were some examples of what we used and how digital standards helped to lead us through this journey. So you can see there, we started establishing key partnerships that help us in our journey stairs, pairs, those type of IOG, train contracts to be digested. Um, we got our digital by default declaration approved by council. And it, that's a massive milestone um, in February, 2017. We used, thank you for all your hard work. We used heavily the strategy for digital public service as a tool to explain the why we need to do this. We got council approval for cyber insurance coverage again major milestone for us changing those mindsets it was a massive collaboration with ncec building together a case for us to present to council i was really surprised with all the effort and support that we achieved through this journey information investigated to assist and inform we utilize in the icsm in the data i'm not school for those nerds out there our new ecm implementation and live in July 2019. We relied heavily on Archives NZ, and um, especially with the digital transfer initiation, we used the checksum, we used the MD5 solutions, we got that over the line. Other ISOs we also mentioned here, we really helped us and steer away from pitfalls. The vendor used our implementation as a case study actually, and that supported them to get listed as the only ECM in marketplace today. So we got our information management strategy and policy approved by council uh, late last year. Again, heavily aligning our goals with strategy for digital public service. Uh, we referenced good practice and guidelines from the GA NZ framework that helped us through this as well. And currently we're doing our probably file digitization project. Uh, it's to be completed by October this year. Again, referencing quite a few ISOs, archives, index tools and guidance was again very helpful for us in this journey. So evidence that we're on the right track. Well, uh, last year we were the runner up for the best supported <coughs> team in this COVID journey. Uh, and um, we can go back one. Um, so that really shows that we are on the right track. So through this, um, Having an awesome team to help me through us through this and having digital standards being my wingman, we managed to stay afloat. Thanks all. Kia ora. Thank you, Shol. And, and again, we're, um, we're seeing standards and practical application and how they've been used in different spaces to keep digital moving and to create opportunity. And it's good to see um, archives involved here. I see Stephen. Today. So uh, it's good to see that also we're starting to join up all the different players that need to be part of this, particularly as government organisations, where things are a little bit more complex than they are necessarily in the private sector. So this is great. Look, what I'm going to suggest now is we take a five minute break.